Sports. Here are the first half of our live wire program. Uh, today we're going to be visiting with St. Charles County Executive Steve Elman. It's been a couple of years since I've had a chance to visit with uh, the county executive uh, uh, due to COVID and just uh, everything else going on. It's been just a busy time, and uh, I'm very appreciative to him and his office uh, for reaching out, and uh, we wanted to get them on the air to talk about What's going on in the county? A lot of exciting things happening, as always, in St. Charles County. And uh, then in the second half of the program, uh, as you heard uh, Steve mention, uh, the captain mentioned a few minutes ago, baseball season just around the corner, so I thought we'd re-air an interview for you about uh, baseball and St. Louis, and not just the Cardinals, but how popular it is from the uh, the minor le- Corey Leagues, minor leagues, and major leagues, and we'll do that coming up in the second half. But first, County Executive Steve Elman on the fi- on line with us. Uh, Steve, good morning. Sorry, Mike. How's you? How's it going? It's great to have you on with us today. It's going great. Appreciate it. Uh, you know, as I said, it's been a couple of years since uh, we've uh, I had you on, and of course, I think the last time was right before COVID hit. Uh, has the county? Is it safe to say you guys have completely recovered from that uh, uh, the pandemic in twenty twenty? Yeah, we're back to what uh, uh, Warren Harding called normalcy. Uh, I don't think it was in the dictionary then, but. Uh, I hope that's what we have now. And as you know, we we uh, we did everything we could to make sure we stayed as close to normal as we could during the pandemic. And I think uh, I think we we came through it pretty well, considering that. Yeah, for a large county, uh, you know, with the, the population you guys had, I you you really did. I, I would agree. And when you look at the overall um, way the county has bounced back and the area in general. Economically, I think it's uh, it's a strong statement that we're all doing pretty well right now. Well, we've got you know we've got some some numbers from the uh, uh, you know on deaths and hospitalizations and number of cases, and uh, you know for the last thirteen years, St. Charles County has been r- rated either number one or number two on healthiest counties in the state, and and that you know that's not that's not because of our uh, our county health department, although they do a great job. It's because Generally, we have diseases and maladies and problems just like everybody else, but, but uh, you know, we don't tend to have them as bad, and a lot of that is because people make uh, better decisions here than they do other places. And uh, I think that really paid off during the pandemic. I mean, we didn't close businesses and we didn't mandate anything. Uh, people were left on their own. Most of them did the right thing, and as a result, we ended up with a uh, much lower uh, death rate than uh, either uh, Illinois or St. Louis uh, County or the state of Missouri. And again, I think that's just because we were we were healthier to start off with. Sure. So, what are some of the uh, the biggest challenges that uh, that you face now post pandemic uh, in the county? The biggest one involves nine one one. Uh, and seven years ago, we invested in a uh, uh, the most up to date system uh, for nine one one, and now it's becoming uh, obsolete. It's going to need to be replaced. We're going to need to make a twelve million dollar investment over the next uh, seven years to get uh, to get a new and improved uh, system. Uh, in the past, uh, the, the counties paid about sixty percent of that cost, and the cities have paid about forty percent. Uh, we're both going to have to come up with a lot more money because in the past, if you remember, 911 was paid for by a tax on landlines. Does anybody out there still have a landline? Very few. Yeah. Yeah, we went from you know we went from two or three million a year down to uh, you know a couple hundred thousand a year on that tax, and we've had to make up the the, uh, the remainder basically from. Uh, from general revenue, either from the cities or the counties. We got, we talked to some people in Jeff City. Our legislators are trying to get us a little relief on that. But uh, that's, that's one of the most important things we do. And uh, we had a lot of problems with uh, getting enough people to work. And man, we really had to overwork our folks. But unlike some other jurisdictions in the region, uh, we maintained our. Uh, uh, our record and our standard of answering calls, and uh, that doesn't seem important until you actually need it. That it's the most important thing in your life. Absolutely, yeah. I, I, and you know, the other thing is too. Uh, uh, we're seeing with the growth in population, of course, that unfortunately at times can mean a, an increase in crime. 
I, I do need to, to hand and say kudos, though, to the St. Charles County Police Department and the other police departments in the region who have joined forces with uh, the county uh, for this regional task force on automobile crimes and things of that nature. Uh, they have really uh, made a dent in the, in the criminal element as far as uh, their, their presence in this area is concerned. Yeah, they and the chiefs get all the credit for that. I mean, they uh, we didn't have to ask them to do that. They they knew how important those things were to the elected officials, and they just got together and, and did it. Uh, you know, twenty five years ago, it wasn't uh, people didn't get along as well as they do now. Uh, the uh, the mayors uh, used to fight with the county executive, and sometimes they fought with themselves. And the police departments all tended to be kind of off on their own and doing their own thing. And now I think we, you know, we have a lot better cooperation between the cities and the counties and among the cities, and especially among our police departments. Our chiefs meet once uh, once a week, I think, now. And they they get together on this task force, and they've, uh, they cut uh, car thefts by 37% in the last year. And... Uh, you know, the interesting thing about that is seventy uh, percent of the people they arrest on those car thefts are not from St. Charles County. So it's uh, when you talk about crime, it's really a regional problem, and it's uh, it's you know we still have a a sixteen percent uh, uh, crime rate compared to ninety four percent in the city of St. Louis, but we're we're getting more and more people from other parts of the region coming out here to to commit crimes and. And the good news is uh, recently we've had examples of that. And, uh, again, the good, that's the bad news. The good news is, is our cops caught them. And they're in jail. And uh, hopefully if there's any criminals listening to this uh, radio broadcast, they'll take note that uh, you're probably better off and have a better chance of succeeding if you go uh, try to steal cars somewhere other than St. Charles County. Yeah, you might want to shop elsewhere. Uh <laughs> I, I agree. Uh, yeah, and uh, again, the, the regional cooperation, as you just indicated, uh, I know our uh, Truesdale Police Department works uh, with the, the regional task force, and uh, it, it's, it's just it's comforting, I, I think, is the best way as a citizen, just an average citizen, to see uh, a, a contingent of law enforcement officers out there, and, uh, and then we hear the good things that do occur. Uh, you know, we, unfortunately, we hear about all the tragic things that befall law enforcement, like what happened in my hometown of Herman just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we forget that uh, these men and women put their lives on the line uh, in, in many different ways on a regular basis. And uh, it just, again, it, it lifts your heart when you see the good things come out, like your, your report on, on crime going down there in the county. Uh, one of the th- challenges now with, with the growth of St. Charles County, and you and I have talked about this before, is maintaining green space. And uh, I know that's been one thing that you've kind of taken under your wing over the last several years as county executive to see to it that you maintain areas where people can continue to enjoy and, and get in touch with nature and yet be close to the amenities that they expect in a county like St. Charles County. Do you feel like that's being accomplished to, still to this day? Yeah, you know, um, 16 years ago when I walked into this office, I talked to our parks director and, and told her that my goal was to have the same ratio of acres to people in St. Charles County as they do in St. Louis County when it comes to parks. And I said, what would that take? And she said, oh, you know, probably, probably, you know, a little over a thousand acres. And I said, good, that's, that's, let's go for it. The good news is that uh, we now are over a thousand acres. Uh, the bad news is we got 40,000 more people. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're still not quite there on the ratio but we're going to keep working on it. And uh, a lot of your listeners, I think, uh, out in the western part of St. Charles County are enjoying Oglesby Park, which we opened last August, uh, which is just it's on West Meyer Road, just to kind of outside the Winsville city limits. And, and it, it's a beautiful park. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's still, you know, it's still... It's still going to take a couple of years for the grass to really get, the, uh, you know, to get uh, where it needs to be. And um, but I think already this summer you're going to see that's 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 going to be one of the real uh, highlights of our whole park system. But we have another bit uh, this last past week. We had a bit of, uh, you know, good news, bad news. 
the bad news is Mrs. Knowles died. And Mrs. Knowles and her husband, uh, 16 years ago, had gone ahead and given us a, uh, they, they retained a life estate in what's called Spring Bend and, and then gave us a deed to it. And uh, when when they both passed away, we would get this property. And it, it, where it is is, if you're coming from St. Louis County on the Page Avenue Bridge, as soon as you get across the river in St. Charles County to the left, there's about 120 acres there of of uh, ground that has not, has not been developed in any way, shape, or fashion, except that they built a uh, log, log cabin on top of the hill overlooking the uh, Missouri River. And uh, we now uh, will be able to go ahead. We've got the plans. They've been on the shelf for some time. We can start working to develop that park. And for the people in the eastern part of St. Charles County, that that is going to be uh, that is going to be a great addition. Like I said, you're going to have overlooks of of the river. It's uh, right there, uh, you know, along uh, the Page Avenue extension. And uh, we're very appreciative to the Noel family and. Um, that, that's going to be that's that's going to be great. So uh, stay tuned. It's called Spring Bend Park, and hopefully we'll be opening that maybe even later this year. Wow! Well, that's fantastic. All right, so I uh, wanted to, uh, again, uh, just for the sake of time, uh, hit on several different issues with you. Uh, transportation has always been a big issue. Uh, I know the governor this year said he would like to see I-70 uh, expanded uh, all the way, actually just past Warrenton, uh, to multiple lanes. I know you and uh, the city of Wentzville and MoDOT, uh, you guys have been working with the railroad to get things done at the uh, S-curve there in Wentzville on I-70. And it sounds like that's finally going to be moving forward, and that's been rated one of the worst bottlenecks in the entire nation as far as traffic issues are concerned. It's number 35, and we've had the money in the budget. Had in the, the money in the budget now for a year. Um, the plan of... Uh, uh, was to bid that contract in June. I hope we'll be able to do that. The problem has been uh, getting the railroads to cooperate. And uh, people in Wentzville say that's one of the reasons why the David Hochul Parkway took almost an extra year to complete. Um, And been talking about this for a long time. you know the railroads. Uh, that, that particular railroad, uh, is, you know, is the same uh, company that's had the problems in Ohio. You would think that they would want to go ahead and uh, uh, be a good citizen and and uh, cooperate with us. And I'm hopeful that will still happen. But uh, it, we're just we're working like heck just to keep that thing on schedule. And then uh, this last uh, last year, now we've got the additional money for the uh, intersection there. That whole intersection, which hasn't been redone since the 1960s, is going to be redone. So they have the intersection and the curve, and uh, you know, I've been telling people for years with that curve. You, that was that was that was done in 1951. That was done the year I was born. Okay, and it hasn't been improved since. And St. Louis is the gateway to the West. But if you want to go west from St. Louis, you got to squeeze under a, a, a two-lane. A railroad bridge on two lanes of traffic and at three o'clock in the afternoon that's hard to do yeah uh, so anyway yeah that's uh that's not only important for the people who live in that area to just be able to get to work and get home but uh you know logistics is a big growing industry in the in the county and you know we have more and more trucks and more and more uh, warehouses and and distribution centers and i don't want to hear a story in years down the road that uh, somebody, you know, decided to put their trucking business somewhere else other than uh, St. Charles County because they couldn't get out of the county uh, in the afternoon. So it's it's an important uh, thing. Now, I will tell you this, that as far as the three lanes are concerned, I mean, we've pretty much got that covered, at least out to David Hochul Parkway. We're going to get it out to... uh, Forestville, and we're gonna we're, we're already talking to Modat now about redoing that entire Forestville uh, exit. I mean that thing; you know, it's two lanes, and it's inadequate in every way, shape, or form. But I tell, I'm telling you what: once we do that, we're going to leave the rest of it up to Warren County. <laughs> I'm sure they'll love to hear that. <laughs> no. Yeah, we're going to leave it up to. Because not only have we taken care of I-70 uh, through St. Charles County. 
but we're the one who had to push MoDOT back in the back in the seventies uh, and eighties to uh, to do the uh, to fix the problem over over in our city. That's where the bottleneck was when I first got into politics, and we fixed that. Then the bottleneck moved out to St. Peter's, we fixed that. Now the bottleneck's in Wentzville, we're going to fix that. And the next bottleneck's going to be in Warren County, and my, you know, I would just say good luck to them. Yeah, well, the good, you know, I always say, though, the good thing with us here is uh, we we can live and learn uh, by watching the positives and the negatives that have taken place, not just in, in the county, but uh, in the communities. And you even see that in, in that's, St. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. And I, I talk about that all the time with our cities, you know. Yeah. I mean, St. Charles, you know, was, was the first to do zoning and the first to have their own police department. And they were the first in everything. And, uh, you know, they did some good things, but they made some mistakes. And hopefully St. Peter's learned from their mistakes. And then O'Fallon learned from both of their mistakes. And Wentzville is learning from everybody now. And, uh, yeah, maybe maybe Wentzville will actually get it perfect. Who knows? Yeah, it's so. – uh... It is, but it is. It's uplifting because uh, uh, I was down in Nashville last week, and when you people talk about coming to Missouri, uh, they I, and I don't mean this in a negative way, other than the fact that St. Louis has got a lot of people scared. But they talk about coming across the river to this side of the river and St. Charles County, and they, they'll talk about the the wineries. They'll talk about the uh, the family arena. I was talking with someone about that the other day down there. Uh, they played a concert there. Uh, things of that nature. We're developing our own identity. We're still a part of the St. Louis Metro, but we also are beginning to develop our own identity out this way. Yeah, yeah. And have you have you heard the story about AFG, yes. American Food Group? Yes. You, of course, your people all know what what's uh, you know what's going on on that. I have to explain to everybody else, but they're going to invest what eight hundred and eighty million dollars in uh, in in eastern Warren County, and their and their project is going to be what a thousand yards from the county line. So obviously, we're very interested in that. Uh, went up there and met those people when they were in in town. Uh, it's a, a gentleman my age and his two uh, two of his kids run the company. Uh, remember the, the governor came down. He's a cattleman, so he could talk their language. And I think he's the one that uh, maybe made uh, close the deal. But they went back. Uh, they went back to Milwaukee, and and the dad and two kids start talking about. Okay, you know they've got seven of these plants. They've got three or four places they can go. Where are they going to go? And and supposedly the story I'm told is that the kids said, "Well, Dad, we can't go to we can't go to St. Louis. They've got a crime problem." Well, I don't need to tell you or your listeners uh, that the the distance, both geographically and culturally, between the uh, you know the North City and Eastern Warren County is immense. And 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 luckily, the dad understood that and overruled the two kids. But uh, you know, if you grow up in Milwaukee, you don't necessarily know that. True. Same thing is true with people on the East Coast and the West Coast. If they're thinking about moving their business to the Midwest, and uh, they're not going to find out about the, uh, the good things going on in St. Charles and Warren County unless they look at St. Louis as a region. And I'm just afraid with all the crime problems in St. Louis, people are crossing St. Louis off the, ri- off the list, which means they're not even going to find out about St. Charles and Warren County. So uh, this crime problem in the city is obviously a tragedy for the people who live there. But it's going to ultimately, in the long run, it's going to affect everybody in the region if we don't get it straightened out. Because I don't think the region's going to start growing until the city fixes that problem. And if the region doesn't grow, it's just a matter of time before everybody who wants to in the region moves out to St. Charles or Warren County, and then and then we'll all be in no growth. Yeah, that's a good point. A couple of other uh, quick topics I want to t- uh, touch on. Uh, last year, I think it was, uh, the uh, county council approved funding for school resource officers uh, for the, the schools, uh, which, uh, again, that's one of those things in today's society is, is almost a must in every school. Uh, any word on how, if that funding is going to be able to continue? I know it's uh, through the 20- well, we know we got We know we got federal funds yet for one more year. Right. We're just going to have to dig, dig deep, and I'm not sure where it's going to come from, but there are some things we can give up if we have to to make sure that that continues. We've hired 14 additional school resource officers. And, you know, I was in the Senate back in, I think it was 95 or 96, where we did the Safe Schools Act. And, and, and that all kind of started uh, in St. Charles, where they had a, they had a task force on, on 
uh, juvenile crime. And, and at the problem at the time, this is how far we've come, Mike. The problem at the time, and what everybody was concerned about, was kids bringing guns to schools. Okay, not to shoot anybody, just to you know, just to show off, and you know. And of course, there was always the chance they'd accidentally shoot somebody, and and. Because of that, uh, well, the schools, they didn't, they would catch these kids and they didn't do anything because they didn't want the public to know this was going on. So we changed the law and made, you know, made it a, a, a misdemeanor for a kid to bring a gun to school and you know, required the, the schools to report it and so forth and so on. We, we instituted school resource officers kind of to deal with those types of kids you know, that would do something which seemed stupid at the time and still does, you know, to bring their guns to school. So our school resource officers went into the high schools and the, and the, and the junior highs. Well, today, uh, the places that are most vulnerable, as we saw down in Texas, are these elementary schools. And we don't have kids bringing guns to schools. we got crazy adults coming in and shooting kids. So it, that's how far this problem has gone. And that's how much worse it is now than it was then. And I think now we, you know, we need to make sure those resources are 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 in the schools where the kids are most vulnerable, which is the elementary, and that's why we did it. Yeah, well, it's. Uh, I think it's going to, you know, unfortunately, it's uh, as I said, it's one of the the necessary evils in today's world. One other thing I wanted to ask you about, and that is because of the upcoming election, uh, you guys, like many other cities and communities and counties, are uh, putting a recreational marijuana use tax on the ballot. Uh, and I guess that's one of those things where if the money's there, why not take it, huh? Well, you know, it's, it's going to be up to uh, whether or not to legalize marijuana was left up to the voters. Uh, th- this tax, of course, is going to be up to, up to the voters. Uh, what I point out to people is, uh, you know, I listen to the radio and the TV uh, like everybody else did. And when this campaign was going on to legalize marijuana, nobody suggested that uh, the state was going to be better off if more people smoked marijuana. Uh, what they pointed out was there were already a lot of people smoking marijuana. Uh, and unlike uh, when you and I uh, go and and, and and have a beer or a, a glass of Missouri wine or, uh, or a glass of Jack Daniels, and we pay we pay state and federal taxes on that. There was there's no tax on marijuana, so they said if, if people are going to smoke it, you know they should be pay the same kind of tax and contribute to the welfare of the uh, the government just like uh, like the rest of us do. And uh, I think. Um, that was an invitation to, to do this tax, and it's in there. And, uh, um, again, it's going to be up to people whether or not, uh, whether or not they want to do it. But uh, it's, uh, to me, in, my, in my view, it's, it's just a matter of consistency. And the money from that? Uh... You can argue that we should do away with, with the other sin taxes, but if, if we're going to have sin taxes, I think, uh, I think we should, should cover all the sinners. <laughs> I agree. And the money for that, is that already uh, been delineated then for, for certain uses? Well, we, had, we, haven't, uh, uh, we haven't technically written it into any ordinance, uh, but what we did this year is to give our people a 7% raise, and we've got a new system set up, which is dependent on us funding uh, funding salaries before we do anything else, which means 2% of our budget before we do anything else. We're promising our employees we're going to take that 2% every year, okay, and then whatever's left, we'll, we'll do it at whatever else we can. Well, this, we're going to use this uh, marijuana, whatever, however much it is, if we get it, that's going to be the first, going to be the first place we go for that 2%. So it's going to be used for salaries. And, you know, 60% of our salaries are public safety. Uh, so, yeah, this is a lot of this is going to go to our uh, uh, law and order efforts. Steve, we are just about done here. Anything you want to add that I'm, I'm blatantly missing before you do wrap it up? No, looking forward to the Cardinal baseball season. I guess that's going to be your next uh, your next topic. I'll have to 
Yeah, we're going to talk a little baseball, and not just Cardinal baseball, but you know that's something else. Uh, even in St. Charles County, again, you look, minor league baseball and uh, the Cory Leagues, uh, that's, that's a big thing that, that helps support this area, and we I think times overlook that. So you know. Well, last, uh, last Saturday night I was, uh, uh, I was at the uh, St. Charles County Amateur Sports Hall of Fame, which is, which is interesting. And every year, I uh, you know I think uh, everything has changed and nothing is the same. And then I go I go to that event, and I see all these old uh, St. Charles and Warren County and Lincoln County names. And, and, and in some areas, nothing has changed. And yeah, we've got a rich tradition of amateur sports, and uh, it's continuing. And uh, you know, I, I told the, the people there that that night I got to say a few words, and I, I said, uh, I said, you know, in politics today, it's it's really getting kind of nasty. And I and I said, I don't even talk about uh, liberals versus conservatives or Republicans versus uh, Democrats anymore. To me, in politics, there's two types of people: there's the uniters and the dividers. Okay, and one of the and, and you know, a lot of the uniters are people who who care about amateur sports. And if there's anything that unites this country, this state, this community, our county, our region, I think it is. It is sports. And whether it's professional sports or whether it's uh, your little league baseball team your kids play on, that's one place where people can still go and have fun and enjoy each other without uh, getting into a political battle over it. <laughs> well said. I agree. Steve, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. It's always appreciative, and I promise it won't be three years before we talk again. Okay, Mike. Take care. You take care. Steve Elman, St. Charles County Executive, with us on LiveWire today. That's going to do it for this first half. Our second half headed your way next.